There's a huge fight going on now. Uh, there's certainly snipers in the street. There's people coming round and outgoing uh, all the time. Even just going to Mosul, you knew on that day somebody would become very near to dying. We're getting nearer and nearer and nearer to the final areas, which is the old city of Mosul. We're right on the edge of the old city. It was very, very intense fighting. Very, very built up area. It's a massive city. clear that this was going to be really, really tough, not least because you're fighting an opponent who wants to die, which is a sort of slightly different dynamic to any other war I've done. I knew it was going to be dangerous. I knew it was going to be chaotic. I just didn't realise quite how quickly it can change from a relatively comfortable, everything's fine situation to, in an instant, just complete madness. Islamic State would either push forward with suicide uh, bombers, come by foot and move just literally from house to house. You feel like you've got established front lines and the enemy is there um, and then all of a sudden they're over there, they're over there, and even worse, that they might just be coming in from behind you. You found yourself going forward with one unit and realizing that actually you've gone past three sets of Islamic State units, which are in the house next door. Don't get shot, please. Go, go. It can change very, very quickly, and by that time it can be too late for some people. I think everyone thought that the Iraqi army was absolutely incapable of this, to be honest. This was an army of 50,000 soldiers that had fled in front of, I think, 5,000 Islamic State fighters. They clearly had been retrained, they'd been rearmed for certain, and they seemed to have got a backbone that they'd never had before. If I'm honest, I was scared the whole time, um, constantly ratcheting it up and you're just trying to get your lid on it. And so you don't just turn up and it's chaos. The chaos increases gradually as you drive in. You know, it's a difficult choice making decisions as to whether today we go forward or not. In this particular instance, it was one of those days where we had got up very early in the morning, five or six, that was the first move towards the old town. We pulled over. It was a really horrible, cold, wet morning in Mosul. And we'd gone forward to a place where we could hear things happening in the distance, but we weren't under any direct threat. People were relaxed with fires and cooking food and stuff like that. So there wasn't any feeling of imminent threat there. My name is Maximox, Iraqi, my country. Then a sniper came past and said, I can take you up to the front if you'd like. And I was sort of thinking, I think I said to the guys, like, I really, this is a really bad idea. I just, just don't fancy this today. It's not, it's not good. Stuart uh, actually hesitated. He wasn't sure. They had another little conflap and then came back and sort of said, how about we just nip up the road and we'll come back? As everyone geared up and got all their gear on, it's like, I can't, I can't just let you go. He has made the decision that if I was happy to go, our security guard was happy to go, and our producer was happy to go, then he, as part of the team, should go. So he agreed that we all went together. So where are we running to? That tight. Let them get there, so we'll see where we're going. And then they're saying, right, now you have to run. So you just leg it. You go? You think? Yeah, now. Okay. Okay. Do you want to go first or do you want to go first? Let's go. Uh... <laughs> OK, you sprint, I'll follow. We arrived and they were saying, get out of the way, get out of the way. And we're thinking like we're being attacked for something. It wasn't, it was a bunch of guys had got a drone, which you know you buy in a sort of drone shop or whatever, not a particularly sophisticated uh, drone. And they've put loads of grenades on it. 
and the soldier will say, like, get out of the way, because these grenades are always falling off. But there's a, a big truck, like a camper van, but it's armour-plated. And that was a control centre for the guy for the drone, so they've got the cameras on that. So I went in to film the screen, hoping to capture the moment where the bomb was dropped and landed on a, a target. I see uh, a digger coming from behind. It sounded like a, a metal grinding sound, like a vehicle hitting another vehicle and continuing driving, like a sort of a slow car crash. Then I just heard a shout and I looked round and all I could see was uh, soldiers running in every direction. And I stepped back out of the truck and I realised that they were all running and people were actually hitting the ground. So it's like thinking, so there's either something coming or something, something's happening. I remember seeing guys running and hearing shouting. And Stuart came in. Everyone's running. It was that sort of split-second decision, do we stay here or do we go? What? Okay, give me a quick one now. We're in normal six places, it's just come down. I think it was a monk who just landed in between us. You can see the whole place is uh, covered in smoke. I think I shout, you, you're still running, you're still running. <laughs> Everyone's going, what the fuck was that? And, and actually, what was funny was as people were talking, it was sort of saying, are you OK? But it was like a question, are you OK? It's like, are you actually OK? And I remember feeling my hands and thinking, wow, I've actually, every bit's here. Ah! Mike, you all right? I did, I did. Come on, go that back. Go back. Go it's funny because the moment that it happens, there's a moment of, I'm alive. So then immediately you think to your colleagues, are they OK? Stuart was there with me, he was fine. And then, really weirdly, I just had pop into my head, I should be a rugby practice with my sons, <laughs> so they shouldn't be here, I should be somewhere else, anywhere but here. And then, just flip back into, right, do your job, you're here, focus, do what you're doing. What was that? Come on, move back, move back. We open the door and there's smoke and there's stuff and there's soldiers running and we get out and it's going absolutely crazy. Move back, move back. Shit. Mike, a security guy, comes running. He told me later that he thought he was coming to find out what was left of us, not, not if we had survived. What? Say again? Come over there. There was a large armoured digger that was in between us and the explosion. I think the proximity to it, we really should have been dead. Oh, oh. There's firing coming in now from two sides. So we run behind this firewall. Hey. And then somebody shouted, there's a sniper, so you go from worrying about that to the next thing. You're rolling, mate. Get all that smoke. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Not only are they under attack, that the weapons that are inside the various Humvees, etc., can't start cooking off, which is what it's called. They, they, actually, the weapons themselves start firing in the heat of the fire. <laughs> the injured are now being pulled out and brought towards us, and there's loads of them. We still don't know how many people died there, but it was a lot. I think it was 20 or 30 in the initial thing, probably at least double that when it came to the injuries after. You ready? Nathan, you still going? For me, doing my job, that mechanism of focusing, framing, recording helps me get past the fear because I've got something to focus on. That was as chaotic as a situation as I've ever been in. And it was my experience. Just focus on what you're here to do, to try and capture some images and some sound of what's happening around you. That's what you're here to do now. I couldn't focus and I couldn't get the shot still enough to use it. And he said, are you ready? And I said, I'm shaking, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. And I was purposely saying out loud to myself to say, your body's doing that, it's perfectly normal, but just kind of get used to it, don't worry about it, this is gonna happen. And then within a few seconds, he just kind of calmed down and went, okay, 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 ready. And he did it, and he got it first time, as he always does. 
Okay. Well, as you see, these people are injured. It's pretty chaotic. We're we'll definitely under attack now. The snipers appear to be in a number of positions. This seems to be something of a coordinated attack. The soldiers are clearly in a certain amount of shock and are still trying to defend themselves. This is uh, pretty nasty stuff here. And it was getting so intense, we had to scrabble to another section. Go, 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 go. You right? We found ourselves in this walled compound. There's a huge fight going on now. Uh, there's certainly snipers in the street, there's him going round and outgoing uh, all the time. Soldiers trying to control us, but we're basically hiding in rubble now. Uh, trying to find a way to get out of here. It's at the moment it's impossible to move, there's just too much action to get. Well, at this point, the call had gone to the helicopters to come and protect them. When all is lost, you might as well all be blown up and some of you might survive because one thing's for certain, the enemy is in, in, in you amongst you already. So the helicopter gunshots are now firing into everywhere where we are. So that adds this massive terror then because they're going to shoot anything that moves because they've been ordered to do so. That was the scariest point because you're thinking if we don't have those guys to defend us, we did have soldiers with us, but your thoughts then start going to, I don't want to be captured by these guys because they just cut my head off on the internet and I don't want that. They're here to defend us, but we were so close to where we think the bad guys were that what if they mistake us for people that they're shooting at? Thankfully, they decided not to shoot at us. So I, think that, I think they knew that we had guys with radios, but it was yeah, very nerve-wracking. We stay there for about, um, oh, I felt like forever, I couldn't even tell you how long it was, quite a long time. And then it, it, the intensity of fighting was getting worse, not better. So we decided to scout round and try and get to the river. One of the soldiers went to have a look down there and he basically signaled to another soldier that he saw, who was another Iraqi soldier, I'm going to come over here with some people. And the Iraqi soldier said, no, we don't know who you are, get back. It's like, no, 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 seriously, we're not Islamic State. It's like, we don't know who you are. In fact, it's worse, you're foreigners. <laughs> we have but one choice, which was to head back to where the explosion happened. Right. Everybody there? Okay, no so we ended up going back round and then scooting over a few walls and through a couple of buildings, worrying about IEDs all the way. Be careful, front of you, wire or something, yeah. don't touch it. Copy that. And then turned up literally next to where the car bomb had gone off. It's still on fire and you can see the remnants, but it looked really bad. It was just chaos. I mean, we couldn't see any, couldn't see any bodies or anything. I'm assuming that, that from the nature of the explosion, it was just incinerated a lot of what was around it. It was clear that there had been a really severe blast. You could see just the frame of the vehicle that blew up next to the tank. It was just charred, still on fire in places. It did make me feel very lucky because that was the first time I realised quite how big it was. To see the scale of the blast, the devastation around it, the destruction that it caused, you suddenly realised how severe and how catastrophic that explosion was to anybody close to it. We then made a decision that we couldn't stay there any longer. And I remember actually as we were running out, I remember saying to Nathan, I did say I had a bad idea. It was like one of those ones where everyone did genuinely laugh. Within minutes, social media has the attack filmed by an Islamic State drone. And it shows this truck coming through the lines, hits into another Humvee, and then drives past our truck and explodes and the mushroom cloud is absolutely enormous. And I remember looking at Nathan going, that, that is our bomb. That really showed the scale of it because 
um, it felt bad when we felt it. I assumed it was awful when we saw it from when we returned to the site, and then to see it from above afterwards it was it was quite breathtaking. Actually, it was um, made me feel sick. Made me realise a lot of people died there. It showed their tactics really, really well. The guy had basically come from behind our lines. The crunching noise that I heard was him pushing past Humvees to get to the tank. Yeah, and then you realize, you get a sense of the, uh, the enormity of it and how lucky we were because we could very easily have died that day, yeah. That was just luck. I've been shot at many times and actually properly targeted, so this wasn't personal, but um, yeah, it's just the size of the bomb. I mean, I think the chance of surviving that are a flip of the coin, I suspect. As a team making that decision at that time and deciding together whether it's safe or not, that's what comes back from that experience for me is that we went there together, we made the decision. It was the wrong decision in hindsight, but we made it together and therefore I can't be mad at anybody, I can't be upset about that. In the future, it has to be the same. It has to be that we're all comfortable doing it together and making those decisions together and taking those risks together.